Hey everybody, welcome back to Horton's Flower Farm. So it's been a little while since I posted because life has just been really busy. We got a brand new little puppy, so he's been taking up some of our time two weeks ago. But I wanted to update you because now it is September and I wanna show you what the farm looks like, what I have planned, and how much money I've made so far in my journey in the season of 2023 on my Yupik Flower Farm. Let's go out in the field and look at some of my flowers. These are some of the bouquets that my daughter and my kids made yesterday. Um, what we basically do is, I know we don't have it now, but we have the tables covered with lace um, tablecloths and we have everything set up. And we have like sample bouquets, people like to see them. So these are just from yesterday, from the weekend, and we're gonna take those home. But let's go out into the field. So this is what it looks like on a morning. Everything's looking pretty good, but let's get a little bit closer. All right, guys, so I'm gonna start us row by row and tell you what's going on. If there's diseases, things are dying back, things are doing, I think, better than last year also. So first we have the first row of zinnias, and if you remember the first row of zinnias, this variety are the Oklahomas, and they were shipped to me from Farmer Bailey's, and they, they weren't as bad as the Benary Giants that had the black spot on them but they're doing very well. You can see that they are getting a little bit, you know, aged and the black spot is going on. We are spraying them every week with a fungicide, but they're looking pretty good and the flowers they're putting off are very pretty. When we walk back down here, it is the Benary Giants. And this was the Benary Giants from, look at the pretty butterfly. <laughs> This was the Benary Giants from Farmer Bailey's that really had the black spot bad on them. And they were so bad that we thought they weren't going to make it. Um, so Farmer Bailey's did refund me on them, but I put them in anyway because I had no backup. I had nothing planned, so I crossed my fingers and hoped for the best. We sprayed and they're looking really good. And we are treating them every week. Um, the flowers on them are nice and big. So they're looking good. That's the first row of zinnias. Okay. All right, guys, I'm going to walk us to the edge of You can already see it. It's doing very well. Um, you can see some of it is, you know, getting a little brown, but it is, look, it's reproducing nicely, and there's still obviously a lot of color on that, tons of flowers. So that's looking really good, the ageratum. I'm gonna pan to the next row, is the celosia. The first variety is the coxcomb, um, and that variety is very popular with all my clients. They love it, all my customers. Um, so yeah, look at how well it's doing. It's nice and tall. They're getting nice big heads. One of them's down there, the really big head on it, you see? But they're so beautiful. And it was really special because some of these spliced two colors if you can see like that, the pink and the yellow. So everybody's getting really excited about finding ones that are like spliced in half. Look at those over there, like that. So this is, look at how tall they're getting here. They're beautiful. So this is going really well. I'll definitely plant this variety next year. And we would get over here. These were some that I planted myself of the plume variety. I just planted a couple. All right, when we get to the Rebecca over here, this is the cherry brandy. I have, I think Sahara in here. Actually, no, I, I bought Sahara and I'm not seeing it. I don't know what happened to it. Maybe this was all, look at this. Oh, it's, it is in here. Okay, so this was supposed to be the Sahara mix and I it looks a lot like cherry brandy to me. It's all red. This was supposed to be Sahara, which let's see, has different color yellows, but it really went all red. So I don't know what happened. That was from Farmer Bailey's also. So I got a lot of red. Let me know if this happened to you guys. But I love the red. For the fall now, in September, everybody was picking the red. So that was it's going well. Now when we get to the Rebecca, I am seeing that this is better than last year. I did hard cuts on this Rebecca as to not have that powdery white mildew. Now I'm seeing, is that it right there? Is that just, yeah, just there you could see it starting a little bit. But last year it was just covered in it. So we are spraying this again with the fungicide. We're treating it once a week. And it's doing much better and I've been doing hard cuts on it because um, less of it together makes less of that powdery white mildew. Now if you go over here you're gonna see some plants are like right here just like brown and dying back 
like that. So they are, you know, in later in the season for them because, you know, they're, they were perennialized, some of them here. So this is late for them. Um, some of them I did succession plant, but they're looking better than last year. So better is good for me. Now let's go down here to the Celosia. And this was the plume variety. Now these are tall over here. I planted these myself from seed. They're taller, but I'm going to bring you to the front of the row and show you how short they are compared to the ones that I planted. So look at these guys. I'm going to, I'm going to show you based upon the coxcomb how much shorter this is. If you see right from here. All right. Do you see how much taller the coxcomb is back here? This is super short. This is probably only like I don't even know eight inches and it is all like that now I know some people commented in this video like cut it all back and I was afraid to and I didn't do it so I let it go and people are still picking it the mason jars it fits in if they're making short bouquets um, I don't know what happened to it I don't know if it was the smoke from the fires that for a couple weeks we didn't have sunlight I mean the coxcomb bounced back but these did not bounce back and get taller so um, that was from, I think, North Carolina Farms. It wasn't from Farmer Bailey. So next year I'm going to use a different supplier for that just because now I'm scared. <laughs> but um, they are beautiful. The color is beautiful. Had they grown tall, they would have been magnificent. But people are still loving, loving them. Okay, to the Snapdragon row. So I'm going to laugh because I told you guys last year that I wasn't going to grow the Snapdragons because they had too many weeds. And I didn't listen to myself. And there they are with tons of weeds. Can you even find them? Not really. <laughs> so I am not gonna plant snapdragons here, but I am going to plant them in my cottage garden because I have to have snapdragons. But now that I have a cottage garden that the weeds are suppressed more because it's a raised bed, I can do better at the weeding. So this is gonna be gone. There's not gonna be snapdragons here next year. And same thing for the status. If we come down this way, I said this last year again that I didn't want status and I did it again. Oops, I did it again. Um, so look, it's just weeds everywhere. Um, yeah, people aren't really picking them, so that didn't turn out, you know, and, and I paid to have it weeded, so this was like, I tried, you know? Last year we didn't, you know, we it was less help. So the status is not gonna go here, but I have plans for this row. I have big plans. Um, I was up last night looking, adding things to my cart, so I'm excited to tell you guys about that. So I'm gonna walk us back to the marigold row. So if you remember last year, my marigolds, I'm going to say they got decimated, like look like they got set on fire by September. And we sprayed this year. And unfortunately, they are starting to take a turn for the worst. They are starting to look again like they did last season. Now, luckily, I did do a succession planting on them just in case this happened. Um, so my back ones are not as bad, but if you look, these were the white swan. So I tried a different variety too. It's still kind of happening. It's really a black leaf spot. If you can see right there, or just look close in, maybe I'll turn the camera around and zoom you guys in. It's really a black spot that takes over. And if you start to look over here at the starfire, they start to go brown, almost look like they're getting like set on fire and they'll go all brown, almost looks like they were incinerated. So it is starting at the front of the row. Those were the first ones. Um, yeah, over here you can see, let me turn the camera around. Okay, so as you can see here, it's starting. The top starts to get brown. You see discoloration on the leaves like this and it will turn just all brown and dead. That one in there is already doing it. So this was the first succession right here. So that's happening and it's slowly spreading. Um, this was, this is still this first succession. So this one is doing pretty good actually. That was the Kilimanjaro orange, I believe. So that one's doing worse. So those first sections are doing worse. I can see it starting a little bit here. Um, so it's not bad. Maybe I'll have another two weeks. So that was the first succession. That will probably all go brown. And then this, is a second succession, which looks a lot healthier because it's younger. Um, those don't look as good, but this is the truly the second succession. So these are still pretty healthy and I'm really glad that I did this because now I have a nice, healthy um, second succession. This probably should last me three more weeks, I'm, I'm assuming, so that will bring me into the end of September. So that's the marigold row. So let's go to Verbena. The sun is bright. Um, so the Verbena, I am so happy with the verbena. I couldn't be any happier. 
I love it. It's whimsical. I get so many butterflies over here. It's just, it's weed suppressing, which I was actually a little worried about this because I thought like, oh, maybe it's like status is not going to suppress the weeds, but it totally did. And it's absolutely beautiful. So I'm just going to pan it with the, all these little butterflies on it because it's really pretty. So I just, I just want to give you a nice pan of it because it's really really pretty I recommend it it's tall um, the flowers last so long in the vase I mean look nothing's turning brown it just it absolutely just stays like this one starts blooming so this is a true winner there's so much of it I I cut it and bring it home I absolutely love it okay so right onto the gomprina which is finally filling out so the gomprina took a while to get to the stage where it's full last season I, I'd say we're like three weeks behind on what this was last year but I actually like this because last year um, you know they, they actually they they're the way that they are they're like they're the you know they're like the ultimate dried flower that's just the way they are but you know they're getting they're getting bigger and finally um, filling out and I planted a lot more whites I planted more orange this year um, I could try a couple more colors I think that was the mix of the purples shades um, everyone loves the purple. The oranges really are so popular too. I love them for fall. So those are the Gomprina and I am. I'm so happy with the Gomprina. They're just so beautiful. And on to the next row of my succession of zinnias. All right, so I'm just going to talk about my succession of zinnias for a second and how this came to be. First, it was a direct seeding, if you remember, of zinnias where my germination rate was so low, it was like 10 or 20 percent germination it was horrible so I was so happy that I had pre-ordered the zinnias in the first row because I would have had nothing for a month for a focal flower so once these didn't pop up I started in seed trays at home and then these are all planted out um, into the holes so they look now just like the first row they have caught up and yes they do but they would have taken, I mean, I would have had no flowers for a whole month. So yes, they do catch up, but for me on a flower farm, I really needed that um, first planting that was not direct seeded. So I just want to tell you about that. Um, I don't, if you're going to be a, a flower farmer, you need that early um, flush of flowers. Do not direct seed your first flush. Um, really start them from seed first, because people were like, why are you wasting your time starting from seed? But it's, for me, it was not true, and I've spoken to other flower, you pick flower farmers, and they do the same thing. They really need that first flush. Okay, so let's get on to it. I know you're probably interested to see if these are having the black spot on them and, and aging, and they are. Um, I would say, I don't know, they kind of look the same as the first row with the spot, leaf spot on them. Um, maybe this side's a little bit healthier, a little, it looks a little bit younger. It should be, right, because it was, um, planted out but again it kind of caught up to those so but it's looking good I think it's definitely looking better than it did last year and again we are spraying these weekly with the fungicide to prevent that from spreading so we're doing our due diligence on trying to make it last longer for the season so let me turn the camera around I'll pan in on it and you can see exactly close up how they're looking okay so this is how they're looking they're looking pretty healthy. I mean, some of this one looks really healthy. Some of them, it's like, it's like hit or miss. Some of them really have like the spot on them. Some of them are looking healthy. So it's kind of a mix. Can you guys see, is the light bad here? I might have to go on this side. Um, there's a beautiful monarch butterfly flying. So yeah, it's a mixed bag here of, um, but again, this is how it goes with zinnias and it doesn't affect their flowers. So look at how beautiful, you know, like the flower heads, are still gorgeous so it's looking really good I'm really happy with my zinnias let's go right into my dahlias I had my dahlias weeded through two three weeks ago and they're small they're small because they were kind of getting overtaken by weeds so now I see a lot of buds so that makes me happy I think we're gonna have a really cool September on these still small smaller than what they should be I think the weed situation on this farm really prevents them from growing like really huge but um I think they're gonna get there I hope look at what happened over here look at how short these are I mean they're putting on beautiful flowers but not I mean like the stem length on that is what like six inches it's not even so we'll see we'll update you on that 
Okay, so my sunflowers. Last week I had a gorgeous flush of sunflowers. And this week, not so much. My sunflowers are like that. I'm not really, the weeds are, let me pan here. These are, this was the sunflower row. And the weeds are just really taking over. And I don't know what to put down for these because you can't put landscape fabric down for them. Um, I guess you could, but you know, I don't know. <laughs> I'm not gonna put landscape fabric down for them. I know that farms, you know, they don't, when you go to a, um, a sunflower farm, it's just dirt and they don't have the weeds. They must be putting some something on there so that uh, they're not growing the weeds. I don't know what that is. If you do comment below, I would I'd really like to know because I'm almost at the point where I'm like, don't even want to grow them but you know people don't pick them as much as you would think because there's so many other beautiful flowers but I guess there are some blooming here on the other side now oh, these were these were kind of done um, so yeah the sunflowers are okay I mean they were beautiful last week I had three varieties going um, yeah so that's kind of my weedy situation with the sunflowers now let me bring you to the cottage garden and if you can tell by my voice, I am so excited about my cottage garden. It is looking so beautiful, so full. I, I didn't think it would get here. And even my vines are finally starting, can you see them? Finally starting to grow up um, the arches. So let me go over there and show you how beautiful it is. Okay, so as I walk in, you can see the vines are finally starting to go up the arches. Yay, it took time, but it is getting there. So this is the cottage garden. The flowers are so tall and healthy. My husband has been hand spraying them with the fertilizer and look at how tall this is. This is like probably almost five feet tall. It's really gorgeous. Um, everything's looking super healthy in here. The weeds are suppressed because uh, it's brand new <laughs> and I've been keeping on top of it. But it's just different because it's a raised bed and um, there's not as many weeds because we put the weed fabric down. So look at, the, look at this. And look, even here, they're still short. Actually, a little bit taller than over in the, um, these are a little bit taller. <laughs> so they did better here. Uh, and look at those, so pretty. So many butterflies. And this is, look, I just wanna show you, this is the one that's the spice ones that have two colors. How cool is that? Really cool, right? And here's the other side here. Oh my gosh, these zinnias are going crazy. They love it. Um, and I'm gonna show you, these are like, Next to them are the double click violet, I think bicolor cosmos, and they are so my favorite. I'm planting more next year, but we'll get to that. Oh, I didn't show you the cosmos in the farm. We'll, we'll go back to that. All right, so I'm gonna keep panning. And we get in here, our beautiful pergola. And look, my coleus likes it here. I planted coleus and it did not like it in the main garden. Oh, I wanna show you guys what my new favorite flower is, and I'm gonna let a little surprise out of the bag when I'm gonna be growing in that other row. I am in love with the pink forget-me-nots. Oh my gosh. Have you guys grown these in bouquets? Oh, I cut some, they're just spectacular. Look at these. Oh, this is from Florette. This celosia is from Florette. It's like a, um, it's like a vintage pink. I think it might have been called vintage pink, I have to say. It's just so tall. It's, oh, it's so pretty. I love it. So look at this view from here. All right, let's pan this way. Let's see what else we got here. Some more cosmos. The celosia, look at the dahlia. It's short here still, but the celosia just love it here. They're like five feet tall and, and growing. This one is, look at it, and that's the florette one. Thanks, florette. So pretty. Um, so you got some snaps here. So that's where I'm going to be putting the snaps. It's just here next year. It'll just do better. Can you see my um, cabbage? Those are supposed to be a cut flower. Um, like, um, they're supposed to bloom like a cabbage flower. I got those from Johnny Seeds. Look at how pretty this is. Let me pan this way. I'll let you guys take it in. This one's a weed. <laughs> I said how weed free it was. There's always a couple. But the celosia. Oh my gosh. My forget me not pinks. There's going to be so many of them on the farm last year. I mean, next year. Look at this weed, guys. Can you tell me what this is? It has like a, a spiky thing in it. I don't know. Comments. Oh, this, this sunflower here. I did not plant this sunflower. But look at it. It's, it's dead now, but 
it was really cool it just popped up um, look at that it's so pretty uh, if you guys want me to go over some of the stuff in here I will but it's kind of basically it's everything from my farm that I've grown and I just put it and mix it together in beds like celosia rubecchia the zinnias um, the snapdragons the coleus more rubecchia the irish eyes I have blue forget-me-nots in there and here are my pretty snapdragons see they look good in here and those dahlias here are growing a little bit taller you see these little um, yellow flowers, that is actually a zinnia. It's a ground cover zinnia. I have, what's it called, um, is it euphorbia? No, I can't remember what the little white flower is. There's some salvia. This is the, um, summer rubecchia. So this is the cottage garden, guys. It's, it's so pretty back here. It's peaceful. It's, it's filled out. And I'm in love with it. So I'm really happy that I chose to do that. Okay guys, so the one thing I didn't mention yet was the Cosmos for the cutting you pick. And I'm not happy with them actually, and I, I don't know if it's the variety. Um, I ordered the lemonade and I ordered the, I think, apricot. It's like a pinkish uh, yellow and they're just short and and now I'm going to say it can't, I don't know what it is. <laughs> okay, so I don't know, if, let me turn the camera around. So they're very short. You can see how short they are. Um, these are getting a little bit taller, but they're short. There's a lot of dead, you know, buds on the top and they were planted in again before we had that smoke. So the ones that I then um, planted at home in plugs myself and put in are doing fabulously. I had some cupcakes, I had some double clicks, and I'm gonna pan it this way. So you can see these guys are doing amazing. And I don't know if it's because it's the variety or it was planted in after we had that, um, after we had that smoke, but it's doing so much better. So I'm not happy with the Cosmo. So the lemonade for sure is very, very short. When we get down to the apricots, they're a little bit taller. You can see behind me now, they're getting a little bit taller. Um, but still, I don't know if I like the color because I feel like the color on this, I'm gonna turn the camera. I feel like the color on these look like, as soon as it blooms, it already looks like it's been faded. If you know what I mean? Where like, look at these, look at these double click by colors. Like, they're just absolutely gorgeous. And where's my cupcakes? Where's my cupcakes? Somebody took a whole thing of cupcakes, which I was happy about. This is one of the, um, so next year I already decided to do all cupcakes, double click, bicolor violets. Um, so yeah, so this variety didn't do it for me. I'm hoping that in a month I change my mind. But even if it's in a month, though, I'm still not going to change my mind on the cupcakes and the double clicks because they're so much better. Um, I'll, I'll zoom in on maybe one of these to show you. This is pretty, what it looks like. Can you see? Let me turn it around for a second. So look, this is the apricot. And yes, it looks pretty. There's like only one of them that is like, can you see? So, I mean, you know, I've, I've gone through them and tried to get bunches myself. They're just like, they're not, I mean, the other ones are so much better. So I'm just gonna stop talking about it. Okay, they're okay, but the other ones are better. <laughs> That's what I'm gonna say. All right, guys, so that was the tour of the farm. Um, if you're wondering how I'm doing with how much money I'm making, I'm doing pretty good. Um, I'm probably averaging around $600 a day, which is great. Um, $600 a day is almost $1,000 a weekend, and I will just about almost break even for the season, which for season two is amazing. And I think by season three, we will actually be profitable, but not losing money and enjoying this and being out here is amazing. It's a lot of work, but it's a labor of love and I'm just really happy. There's so many people enjoying these flowers. People just like, they come here and they thank me for opening this up. They're paying me and they're thanking me. So how could you not love that, right? Making people happy, the kids smile. Um, so it's totally been worth it. I love it, I'm excited for next year. So I have events and things planned for my farm. I'm gonna be announcing them on social media this week. Um, I've been hinting at it for people who are here. They, they know of some cool things that are happening. So I'm going to talk about that in a different video once I get it all straightened out and settled. But September is here and this is what it looks like. And we're excited 
for the upcoming months, which is only October, but we hope to have these flowers through October because